the only spirit African language uh, to learn. Which tongue could that be? Here is an epic disclosure. Could it be Hebrew? Modern Hebrew was created in Europe by Europeans, especially by Yehuda, uh, uh, Eliezer ben Yehuda, pronounced Geza Heli Yehuda. Born Eliezer Yitzhak Hellman, 7 January 1858. He died 16 December 1922. Hellman, in Lusky, Lithuania. Look what they have achieved. They run the United States. They run this world. What more? If the direct descendants go back to speak the original tongue, how much would they revive and score? You can find his biography here on this website that is indicated here. So, modern Israel Hebrew uh, was created in late 19th century. It was a mixture of Biblical Hebrew, Mishnah Hebrew, also the issue influence of Yiddish, which is a German language. They are written Hebrew, they simply use the, their literal models, however, with a lot of modifications. When it comes to the use of tenses and subordination in sentences structure, the influence of Yiddish was predominant. It is possible to conclude that the founding speakers of Israeli Hebrew were native speakers of Yiddish, a language of Europe. It is one of the major differences between mechanic Hebrew and modern Israeli Hebrew. The new words created for modern Hebrew are strongly influenced by European languages, mainly German and Russia. Is Arabic the language? Not so. We have already dealt with this thoroughly and convincingly because we know that Arabic was created and crafted again by the same method from African Bantu languages. Why? Because there was no Middle East, it never existed, and many of its uh, character and alphabet is a copy of African dialects. And this, you can l watch this YouTube that is indicated here. It's clear, it clarifies that problem. So, we need our own language. But which one? You see, it is not lucid to speak to your creator in an enslaver or colonizer language. Therefore, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and all other non-African languages have severe spiritual limits when we philosophize, when we think, when we meditate, and when we express ourselves to the creator of our ancestor. Unleash your creativity and your living identity with your great ancestors by mastering the basics of this one language. It will definitely give you a huge spiritual advantage. The big question is, since we have eliminated all the la languages, which one? Let us look at what Dr. John Henry Clark once said. Here's a cartoon. He said, powerful people never teach powerless people how to take their power. Modern languages is a method of power retention. When it is married to technology and philosophy, it brainwashes us. What is the language? you use to think. It's English or the language that you have been trained to. The inner voice in you, what language does it use to speak? Do you know that Ethiopia and Egypt produced the earliest civilization in the world and it was indigenous? So far as the records of language and mythology can offer us guidance, there is nothing beyond Egypt and Ethiopia but Africa. All indications shout distinctly this declaration, Africa is the birthplace of speech, of alphabets, and numbers. They are ancient Egyptians, and they were ancient Egyptians who were Africans. They were Africans. Egypt was only the spokesperson of all of Africa. Therefore, the ancestral root and origin of ancient Egyptian language should be found in Africa and Yona. Are there some records? of this in the hieroglyphic signs. We are searching for our language. Let us look at Bantu. You see, this word Bantu is exactly what it is in ancient Egypt. It is only this word Bantu that means a language, the philosophy, the physical human being, the culture, and the spirit that is found in the man. It is the philosophy of knowing that man is an animal and a god in union. That's what Bantu means. That's the philosophy. That's the ideal. That's the bedrock. From Hamiti, here are some words. Anu, 
based on Bantu, um, Anu Me Anu of the North, Heliopolis, Anu Shemo Anu of the South, Hemopolis, Emant, Anu Monte Anu of Hemopolis, Anu Anu Afdu, Iku, the four ancestors of Anu, Ugrit, goddess of the Juat of Anu, uh, Anu Pto, the Anu of Pta, Dendera, Dendera, Anu, and by the bad Anu, the domination of the root word Anu or Bantu, meaning people, should be enough evidence to lead us to finding the language that we must use, the language that Africa must adopt. A good place has become an evil place. In Egyptian, it's Bu Nafret Su M Bubon. Bu Rafet Mel Ni Bubon is Wolof, similar. So we are getting closer to that original language. But first, we need to deal with who and what is the creator. In simple terms, if you have ancestors, uh, beginning with your father and your mother, to your grandparents, and on and on you go back, into holy timelessness, the one and only creator who created the first and original ancestor, that is what humans now call God. He spoke to our wise national leaders. So finally, man is an animal with a divine spark, with an origin, and the man is divine animals. This is what ancient African thinkers told us. And therefore, they said, if we stand tall, it is because we stand on the shoulders of many ancestors. Yes, we must find that language. Let's look at yeah, David Livingstone, missionary who traveled all over Africa and spent a lot of time in South Africa. There is a cave, uh, says Livingstone, near uh, the village of Seychelles called Lepelole. You can find this in many of his books. And he said that in this cave, there is a habitation of a date. And no one who went within that ever came out again. The date was crook-legged. And the description of him reminded the traveler of the god that he had learned in ancient Egypt, Ptah. In the crook-legged form of Ptah, he is called Sekari. That's a wrong word there. It's actually Sekuru, that ancestor we spoke of. And by reading the word Sechele with the R instead of L, as in Egyptian, we obtain the name Sekeri, which is Sekuru, which was already there. The cave represented the Mexican of new birthplace. Uh, the embryo is certainly one with the hot and taut Utiko, or the wounded one. Now, what is the language of this ancestor? What is the language of this divine power who created our ancestor? That is the only spirit African language we must learn. Some steps to guide us or to this language involve understanding hieroglyphics. Africa produced thousands of writing systems. It is well known that they all added to one powerful language now called Metro Nature which is accurately the language of Africa. Nature comes from the oldest African languages. It was the culmination of thousands and thousands of years by black scholars in antiquity who produced it. There are more texts in this language than in any other Asian language on earth today. The symbols are called hieroglyphics and they are animals and natural phenomena found only in Africa, nowhere else. These are these are the animals that are found only in Africa, nowhere else. The African use of you, prefix using place like in Isiskosa, it denotes a person. The you in such names as Uganda, Ugogo, Usakara or Ujiri. Usakara in Chishona Bantu means very old. There is a district in ancient Egypt and in antiquity called Sakara, bearing the name of the oldest Egyptian pyramid. Uganda is a country far south of Egypt, north of, Af of other African countries. It's the country of Ganda, answering to Kenta, hieroglyphic, the name of the south. So in hieroglyphics, they were pointing their language to its source, which was the south of Egypt. You can see these are the symbol of Met nature, uh, where this represents Aneta, and this represents uh, words, holy words spoken. Here is a solid a proof of the African origins of this tongue. It comes from the baboon or a monkey, which is only found again 
in Africa. You can see this is the baboon. This is the monkey. You can see this is the baboon. You can see this is the God taught, the wisest who introduced speech. Here is the critical answer to which language we should use. The baboon or monkey of Africa gives us this crucial answer. Only in Africa is there evidence of the original reality that produced phonetic, linguistic, voice, speech, uh, talk mechanics and uh, whose source of this absolute truth is still existing today. It is found nowhere else. Bantu is a combination of the divine and animal. Therefore, the Sinocephalus ape or baboon in Africa utters a specific discrete tonal sound. The connection to our quest is apparent in this sound. The baboon or dog-headed ape is known as Beni or Fani in Egyptian. It's Bantu meaning a resemblance. Things that resemble each other. That sound resemble each other. That is the link. We saw that the Amafen are the ape-like humans. The ape was a type of the Typhonian Kepha, as portraits prove and show Kafi after whose image the Amafen are named. One of Africa's most notable gods associated with speech, with writing and knowledge was Shehuti or Tot. The baboon of Tot, also known as Istes, became an assistant in the judgment hall in the underworld. Here it is. Here is Tot. The totem Soko also infers to words. Soko or baboon is also the moon god who helped and assisted Africans to setting up of the Sabbath, understanding the weather, and he announced the setting of the new moon. When they call you a monkey and throw bananas at you, you must remember and understand that it's because they sense your originality. What sound or connection or phonetic link we Africans have or in our languages with a baboon or a monkey or taught the God, it is the click. That is what we have. That is divine. That is ancient, the most ancient sound. Still linked to divinity. Still linked to the animal. Still being a symbol of what a Bantu or Omuntu is. The Hottentot express the clicking. In Egyptian, tet is speech, language, and tongue. Tet means to stammer. The earliest language or tet with the tongue would be that of the clicks. And the fact seems to be registered by the tet or titi of the blue crane and the clicking of the monkey or the baboon. The personified tet of the language in its earliest existence or face. The Hottentots identify the baboons with a tribe of the Amafen people or ape men also called the Amatus who became apes through fastening pick handles to their bodies because they didn't observe the Sabbath. And this turned out into the tales. Ama denotes the man in Kaf, in Kafi, Fene the baboon in Kosa and Zulu represents the Egyptian An, Elia Fen, whence Ben the ape. Thus the ape men in African language are the monkey men in ancient Egyptian language in the image of the Ben, Fen or Ahan. The clicks are the clue. They are the oldest, give us the oldest form of language. The oldest name of the moon uh, signifies this name occurs in the Bushman language as Kau, Karu. Tak is an Egyptian name for Tat or the moon. Ak and Ka are the st still earlier forms of A. And with the article, these become Tika or Tek. Keru is the word to speak, speech, and Tek was the word or logos of the gods. Tek Keru is the word personified in Tek. The oldest name of the male lunar date and of another measure, measurer, the goddess of the man, Tekai. Another hotentot name of the moon is Gha. In Egyptian, Teha or Aha, the softened form of Tek. So Tikakush is the older form of Aku. Tikakush is the sky. In Egyptian, Aku is the elevated heaven, the upper of the Twa. These are how the movement of the Bantus and iron working and agriculture occurred and we learned and continued to speak our language. The following specimen list is uh, taken from the uh, Makua dialect, one of the eastern uh, 
groups of the Bantu language found in Mozambique. You see, the Makua, is a Ahano concubine, a Tata ancestor, Eyo, yes, a Hippa, a Ho, in Kukuhen, Shato, Python, Equip, Fist, in Kope, Bull, and Kettle, Kenu, concubine, Ata, Father, Ea, yes, Hep, Eli. All these are the languages that prove that we are the original. In Zulu, the Donga is a cutting or a division in the land. The thigh, which is one of the two, the divided part of the body, is likewise tanga in Zulu, tungi in Musetanto, tongo in Fula, tango in Kano, and tanke in Wolof. The ten for the division is also a number ten in ancient Egyptian as in English. The Makua language, the division is marked in Tanu or Shanu for number five, or one of two hands and by Tani number five in Vanos or Malemba. How ten tet? In Egyptian who do denote those who were first of speech, the hot and tots today. This on the way from the app, the still earlier type of the clicker, would become a tattoo of distinction. The speaker is the primordial name. It's Africa is African. Modern scholars have proved this. Quinton T. Atkinson from University of Auckland has published in the general science that the foreign the research that he has done has proved that Africa is the source of all languages and that many languages drifted from this apparent source. You can find and study this on uh, tracing the origins of language. Uh, this is from the uh, New York Times and the shaded areas show the likely origin of language Africa. Now, here has been presented the only one ancient African language each and every black person on earth must master. Why? Our ancestors were the only wisest and civilized people in antiquity. They showed us the way. It's no secret that the outcomes of erudition in this ancient African language reverberates with the sustained awakening of our and your spirit. In conclusion, a bishop Callaway wrote that he had a strange name for the creator. One very interesting discovery was that of the name Ukkamata for the creator among a tribe of frontier Kafis. It is a name almost universally unknown to white men and entirely so to white missionaries. What the natives said of this being was more remarkable, more like theology than anything I have met with. And what was especially interesting is that my informants told me it was their tribal name for Utiko before Utiko before they came into contact with the Hottentots. When they gave it up for the Hottentot word Utiko. So this is the day to start your mastering of Medu nature. Build it from Bantu languages with clicks. It is indeed the holy language. Please teacher Rabbi LM Tumizulu, Spirit Life Infused of Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. Subscribe to our channel, share this message, and contribute by way of your comments. Thank you. Goodbye.